the river. Finally this week, our attention is drawn to the border, as it so often happens. Because we are poor and because there is no work, those are quotes, are not good enough answers when migrants are asked why they're seeking asylum. That's according to Jens Eric Gould, a reporter with the Santa Fe, New Mexican. He writes, quote, what many don't know is that unless they can prove they've been persecuted in their home countries for specific reasons, their chances of migrating to the U.S. and obtaining asylum are extremely low. And end quote. Harry, interesting uh, uh, point there. And I, I think I see where the administration's going here. If they make it that hard, is the idea right. here to stem the flow? Is that, is that what's, what's that, going that, on To here? the extent that there's a strategy, that seems right. to be the uh, strategy, to communicate that if you uh, come here and you're not going to fit into the narrow categories of asylum, you're just sim simply not going to be I admitted. Right. And this gets to uh, a lot of really, really significant uh, issues. Mm -hmm. So let's stipulate that being a victim of domestic violence or being uh, targeted by uh, gangs or many other things, say, in Central America, mm -hmm. that's a terrible uh, life. And we can understand why people would want to flee and want to bring their uh, kids. Mm -hmm. The problem is the way asylum law works and the way the concept of asylum works uh, generally, mm -hmm. it really focuses on political uh, you know, issues. So are you at odds with your uh, government? Are you being targeted because of your race or ethnicity? Right. So I'm moving to uh, Lebanon, which has not only a million and a half Syrian refugees, but a half million Palestinian refugees. Right. And when we think about asylum, we think about asylum in those sorts of uh, categories. Mm -hmm. The challenge here, I think, is how do we think about asylum? How do we think about it in the context of, of migration? Because lots and lots of people would want to come to the United States and given our uh, values and given the dire straits that many people are uh, living in, mm. what is the right thing to uh, do, bearing in mind that there's no way that the United States could possibly accept everybody who is living in a similar circumstance who would want to come here? Right. That's a tough one, Dan, isn't it? I mean, we want, to, we want to be true to our values, but at the same time, it is a numbers game as well. But is this the right way to go, what we're doing here? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I think, look, the, the problem is everything that we talk about in politics, there seems to be a cause and effect, right? Mm -hmm. the, you know, it's clear that our process for getting to become a documented immigrant in this country has been broken for a long time. I mean, if you want to come here and go to work, it right. could take five years. I mean, it's insane to figure that, to, to wait that long. The answer can't be, well, let's all rush the fence, right? The answer can't be, hey, the line to get in the concert's not going fast enough. Let's just run through the gates. Sure. So, you know, we seem to be in this conundrum, right? We have this broken system. Nobody wants to fix the system. Mm -hmm. We politicize everybody trying to come across. We have all these arguments. I mean, I, I, I hearken back and look, I, I feel bad when I say this all the time because I, I really don't dislike the guy on many levels. I, I don't, I'm not the biggest Trump supporter mm -hmm. on a lot of things. But, I mean, I'm looking at even the stuff that got sent out to us, you know. We talk about the crisis at the border. And eight months ago, you know, everybody was telling them there's no crisis at the border. Right. Trump made this up. Right. Now, clearly, there's a crisis at the border. Yeah. So, I Fair mean, enough. we've got to figure out a way to fix the problem. The, the problem is that those that we rely on to fix the problem in Congress and our leadership would much rather throw rocks and stones at each other right. than address the problem. We're doing nothing. And look, this stems back to when Ronald Reagan gave amnesty. I mean, we've had these problems right. and we seem to just kind of let it build, build, build. When it gets to that explosive level, mm -hmm. we just blanket amnesty, let's start over again. Right. And so we've created a system that encourages what's happening while not addressing the broken parts of the system. Interesting point there. In the news this week, Christina, make this even more problematic, the ACLU came out with that report saying there's been an upwards of a thousand kids separated after the judge's order saying this administration needed to stop this. And my question always is, where is the backstop? When an administration breaks the rule, everybody just sort of goes, oh, okay, you know, there's nothing to be done about it. So we get all these migrant kids locked up now. It's, it's, it's insane. How, how do we get out from under the kid thing, first of all? Is there something in our Congress that's not being done? Anything, oh, there's something. a lot in our Congress <laughs> right. that remains undone. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's a difficult question to answer, yeah, Gene. Uh, mm -hmm. the, um, uh, the law breaking of the current administration mm -hmm. uh, comes in various ways. And so it is the, both the discretion of immigration judges, the lack of immigration judges, the lack of a co coherent process, a point there. but also right. the mm -hmm. goal of the administration is to depress the numbers mm -hmm. of asylum seekers or uh, 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 people who are awarded asylum, but is also to depress 
the avenues for legal immigration. Mm -hmm. And that also includes very much a targeting of family reunification as opposed to the so-called merit uh, business of mm -hmm. rewarding people to come. But you know, we still want to control them. This Guatemalan thing, apparently uh, we're even considering, well, Trump has even said apparently, uh, we will do this deal with Guatemala and they can keep people there from Honduras and San El Salvador uh, and, but at the same time, we can give Guatemalan farm workers access to our fields. Right. Well, you know, some <laughs> years ago, it was called the Bracero Program. <laughs> and that's exactly what we did with Mexicans. That's right. We imported them to work in U.S. agriculture that institutionalized and routinized yeah. the phenomenon of Mexicans migrating to the United States, or it accelerated it. And we are still seeing evidence of that. Right. Well, we want to control labor, we want to control the flow, but it is in very private, affluent interests in the United States. And so it is a very complicated issue. Mm -hmm. I would like to take just a second Please. to talk mm -hmm. about a symposium that mm -hmm. apparently was held. It was called Symposium by the Wall, and it brought Donald mm -hmm. Trump Jr. and a cast of characters that are way on top of the high restrictionist right. agenda. Mm -hmm. Tom Tancredo, uh, Chris Kobach, uh, a number of these was folks. Ban was Bannon there? Bannon, Bannon yes, was right, there, that's right. and yeah. they went to Sunland Park. Right, that's right. Right outside of El Paso, poor area. We used to, growing up in El Paso, we used to picnic in Sunland Park, right, right. right near there. And their idea was to have this conference to talk about how successful the building of this wall mm -hmm. on private land and how good that was and that that's what we really need right. and that the people supported that. Hey, there's a counter narrative in, in the state of New Mexico and that is all of those hundreds of volunteers from southern New Mexico and Albuquerque who assisted the asylum seekers as they mm -hmm. were coming through. Mm -hmm. Uh, and shared their interest, or at least shared compassion uh, in, in helping them in this process. There was also a project that's very symbolic of two professors who designed a project to have pink seesaws actually penetrate the bollards yeah. in the, <laughs> on the fence, yeah. and kids seesawing that's right. to suggest that there are still commonalities that's there's right. a common ground that's right that's not what trump's defiance at the border is showing that's right my god but on a minute left we'll finish with you on this the idea that's floating out there about a marshall plan for central america raul castro the presidential candidates talked about this the idea basically that folks need to get stood up on their feet if you really want to stem the tide of immigration i mean that's the only 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 answer is to help these folks get you know their democracy figured out all that is that the way to go here it's a lot of folks don't want to do it you know what i mean they don't want that kind of tax money going down there but for you is that the answer well i think it's it's an option i think it's something that we should consider um mm -hmm. everybody's i mean again this is almost like talking to edu about education in mm -hmm. new mexico i mean it's a there's so many competing issues so many competing competing interests and competing narratives that's right um uh I guess uh, I, I guess I would I, I would say two things. One is that uh, you can't blame this one on the Indians. Uh, <laughs> one and uh, there, there's always hope. Right. Be, until the point when, when Indians decide that it's over in this country and we start immigrating to Beirut mm -hmm. or, or right. Canada right. or right. Australia or New Zealand, well then it's over, folks. That's right. But mm -hmm. until that time, right. we have to just. We really need to decide who we are as a nation. That's right. What are our values? What do we believe in? And what are we going to do? Because it's you know, until we do we really take hold of this. The conversation it, needs to happen. Yes, absolutely. All right. That's there. Hey, reminder: there's a sales tax holiday for many back-to-school items like clothes and computers. During our Facebook Live session this week, we talked to Richard Anklum of the Tax Research Institute about the effectiveness of the annual event. Find that conversation on our New Mexico and Focus Facebook page.